Hey guys, my name is Bailey. Um, I'm happy to be speaking with all of you of Trout Unlimited. I was supposed to be giving a presentation this month for the Five Rivers chapter in Durango, um, but due to COVID, we were not able to do that. So in the true new nature of this world we're experiencing, I am just doing a video from home for you. Um, and also, I'm sorry, but I just, a few days ago knocked out my front tooth so you get the new buck tooth version of myself um, anyway my name is Bailey Conaty um, I was asked to give a little presentation just on female guiding and my experience as a guide and a little bit of spring fishing excitement so um, I started fishing when I was pretty young, my dad was always a guide, and so I grew up going from time to time with him, but not a whole lot. Um, I really started to love it a lot more in college once I met some really good girlfriends, and um, yeah, got super inspired that way and started to fish a lot more, learn a ton more from my dad, which was very fortunate. And the passion kind of kept going from there, moved to some different areas of the country where I got to do a lot more fishing met some incredible people who helped me out a lot and that's kind of how I got my start in guiding and um, born and raised in Durango Colorado moved back once I wanted to start guiding and um, have been fortunate to have that opportunity there I currently guide for um, what was Animus Valley Anglers now is Rio Epic in Durango and I also guide in Alaska for um, two months of my season with Alaska Wild River Guides. So uh, here we go. Um, okay, the first question that I'd been asked to uh, respond to is um, to give a little background on my guiding and fishing. I think that I just did that for you. And so we'll move on to the next one. Um, okay, so what attracted you to guiding? Um, a lot of things attracted me to guiding. I think that one of the biggest things that attracted me to guiding was seeing I was living in Bozeman at the time Montana and um, I was seeing a lot more females guide up there than I had previously and I knew I loved it so much and so I just kind of I'm very um, motivated by a challenge so I kind of wanted to see if I could also step up to the guiding world um, I guess another thing that I really wanted to do with guiding was just get better in general at fishing. So, um, you know, as a guide, you get to watch a lot of different people fly fish. Teaching makes you really learn something very well. Um, and it exposes you to an industry full of incredible people and experts who really know what they're doing in a lot of different realms. So all those things really attracted me to it and um, there's been a lot more wonderful things that have come with it. Um, next question, what do you like most about guiding? Well, I guess this is kind of a cliche answer, but it is definitely the truth. I love being on the river and I love spending the day on the river with really cool people. You get to meet some really wonderful clients and they become your friends in time and you just meet such cool people with awesome stories and it makes for an enjoyable day out on the river um one family i can think of in particular was a family of a father and two sons and his sons were a little bit younger probably like eight and twelve and um we were on a wade trip together and i was up river a little bit helping the father when one of the young boys came running up to me and was like Bailey Bailey come down here um, we need a little bit of help we caught a fish but we can't quite get him in the net right and I just so badly don't want to hurt him and um, so I ran down with them and they had done great and they were just holding the fish in plenty of water with good current and just waiting for me to get there um, and the little boy was just like so concerned about the fish and the f fish was still in good shape and healthy and swam off strong as can be. Um, but I was just so happy to see that out of him. Not only did I enjoy those um, guests so much, but also, you know, one of the coolest things I think that you can do with guiding is to really try to instill important practice in people. And my favorite thing is to teach people to really take care of fish. So. Um, 
yeah, that was really cool. Um, next question. Are there differences between male and female guides? Oh, clients. Well, there's differences in the guides and the clients. Um, by answering the question between the clients, yeah, I mean, women just catch a lot more fish than men. <laughs> um, I'm kidding, to an extent, but it is so funny how many days I get women out on the boat who are just so much more relaxed about it and ready to take the day as it comes, and they end up just getting so many fish. So, um, I don't know, both men and women, I've had such wonderful clients, and they both have such awesome mentalities most of the time, and um, women, I would say, in my opinion, come a little bit more ready to just learn and try different things, and that does go a long ways. So, sorry, I'm rooting for my team, but that is something I've experienced. <laughs> um, so, anyway, um, moving on to the next question. Um, what are some challenges of being a female guide? Ooh, um, I have to say I've been really lucky. I have not quite had the experience that I know a lot of women go through where they're just really not welcomed in at first. Um, luckily I started guiding where I had some roots and so I feel like due to that a lot of the people on the river feel like my friends and my supporters as well and so I've actually had a lot of the men in our area help me and support me more than anything else. Um, that being said sometimes I think it's been challenging for me just to like know my place as a woman in this setting. Um, I especially experienced that once I started guiding elsewhere a little bit. Sometimes when you're with an all-men crew and you work really tightly together and often together, um, it's awesome. It's so much fun. You get on the same page and really make some good friends that way. But at the same time, if there's no other women around, sometimes I find myself saying like funny things where I'm like, I wouldn't normally say that. I'm much more ladylike than that, or um, that just sounded like such a thing for the guys to say. Um, and I'm like, man, I'm just trying to figure out how to be one of the guys, I guess. Um, but in time, I think you learn that, you know, you're not one of the guys and just become comfortable with just being yourself and letting that be enough. And I've had people treat me pretty well with that. So I have had a pretty good experience in general. Um, yeah, all the classic things, of course. How'd you get that woman to row your boat all day? How'd you how'd you get a woman that great? You know, I get a lot of that from clients nearby and stuff, but I think that's to be expected. And, um, you know, most of my guests on my boat or whoever I'm waiting with are respectful and awesome enough to not even really pay attention to any of those comments. So, yeah. Um, next question. Um, what does a female guide bring to fly fishing? Um, I think a female guide can bring to fly fishing the same thing that anybody else can. Um, I think it's up to the guide as an individual, not necessarily man or woman, as far as um, if you're gonna make you know, your guest satisfaction a priority, your guest safety a priority, and the river and the resource a huge priority and I love seeing that out of any guides that I meet who make that clear and that's certainly what I strive to do. Um, one thing that I would say might be good about more women is definitely great about more women guiding out on the water that a lot of especially my female clients have told me is um, they just feel a little more comfortable that way. It's just a little less intimidating to approach those pieces of water when you don't feel like such an outsider. And I don't want it to be intimidating for women to approach the water, so I love that I have heard that and I love that aspect of it. Um, so, thoughts on getting more women into fly fishing. Okay, my thoughts about this were kind of just covered, I guess, a little. Um, but I am all for more women getting into fly fishing. I love it. I support it. I love guiding women. Um, I've taught a couple women's clinics through the last couple summers that have been a real joy to teach. And um, like I had said, I support anyone getting into this sport who um, really cares about the river and the fish. 
and you know everything that comes with fishing besides just catching fish and so I hope those are the people that we see getting into it and um, I think there's a lot of women that feel that way and that have you know a passion and great skill in fly fishing and so I think they've inspired a lot of others to uh, get into the sport that's certainly who I have been inspired by most are some of the women I look up to and um, I think we'll just see it continuing and I fully support it so go ladies um, a good guide story is our next question here um, and I'm sorry guys I'm not the queen of humor so some of my friends have like hilarious guide stories and I don't know if I just don't foster that or if it just hasn't happened to me yet but um, I guess I'll give you a guide story that was kind of special for me um, when I first started guiding in Alaska I was pretty excited one of my goals just in general fishing is to get to some areas where I would get to see some awesome wild anadromous runs that's um, one of my passions and I think it's one of the most beautiful things that you can see um, so I was pretty excited just to go see those runs of fish and um, my first season we had a day that I was fishing with a young client and he could really fish a boy from Wyoming he was awesome to have on the boat he and his father and we were fishing the coho run um, and we got a bright sunny day and we were able to fish poppers on the top water for him which I had never done anything like that and it was just so active and impressive to see those fish just attack those poppers that way. It was just one of the most exciting guide days I've ever had. It didn't even feel like I was guiding at the end of the day. Um, and I just remember kind of looking around at the end of the day after such awesome fishing and seeing such impressive runs of fish and wild rivers and, um, you know, just kind of reflecting on getting to that moment and I was just kind of like wow you know like I can't believe I've like come far enough to be here and you know I mean people take guiding everywhere and I think all guides have kind of those moments of just like man I'm so happy to have gotten here and that was one of those for me and so that was just a special day in my mind it always will be and a really cool experience as a guide and um, phenomenal guests once again who made that happen so that's why that's one of my favorite aspects of guiding um so to wrap up um if i were going to be doing this presentation in person with you guys we were going to do a pretty good chunk on um, tips for spring fishing obviously that's not going to happen now but i'll just throw out a couple and i did think that one thing that would be pretty fun for this was to reach out to a couple friends of mine in durango who are both ladies that love to fish and due to this you know presentation kind of having that nature of women in the fly fishing world i just thought it'd be cool well if we want tips for spring fishing let's reach out to the ladies in our area who fish and see what they like to do um so one of my friends emily responded to me and she gave me a tip that i had kind of forgotten about and i loved um, and she was saying that she loves to dead drift streamers in kind of that bigger, heavier spring water. Uh, so that's super cool. I think that's an awesome way to fish. I mean, the heavy runs definitely push some of the smaller fish downstream and can be pretty tough on them. And, um, you know, you hope that a bigger fish is waiting and ready to scoop them up when that happens. So, you know, good one to be imitating. So I like the idea of dead drifting the streamers in the springtime. Um, another tip that I would give, um, of course, you're going to want to focus on more of the slower slack water. But in addition to that, if you're fishing the right water, then continue fishing the bugs that you're finding on the river. So I see a lot of people want to put on something super flashy or super big in the spring when the water's a little murkier or a little bigger. And I would say, you know, sure, maybe that has its time and place. Um, but in general, I have far better luck if you just stay true to the actual aquatic life that you're seeing. And, um, you know, 
match your patterns to what you're seeing on the river. Even if it's real small, the fish are going to see that and they're probably going to eat it better as long as you're fishing the right water because they're still keen to what's, what's really in the river and that's what they want to be eating. So that's one thing that I would say I try to remember. Um, so yeah, that kind of wraps it up. I wish so much we could be in Durango doing an in-person presentation and sharing a couple beers afterwards. Um, but uh, thanks for listening to this anyhow. Again, my name's Bailey, and um, thank you for the invitation to be with you guys. So happy spring fishing. Go out and get them.